Hello and welcome. In this video, we will walk through a circuit analysis problem step by step. Our goal is to calculate the value of the load resistor, labeled as RL, that will allow for the maximum transfer of power from the source circuit to that load. We will be using a fundamental concept in electrical engineering called the maximum power transfer theorem. Let's begin by examining the original circuit diagram provided in the figure. On the far left, we have an ideal current source. The arrow inside the circle indicates the direction of the current, and the label 10A tells us it supplies a constant 10 amperes of current. In parallel with this current source, we see a resistor with a value of 10 ohms. Moving to the right side of the circuit, we have another branch. This branch contains a 5 ohm resistor connected in series with a 15 volt DC voltage source. The polarity of the voltage source is marked with a plus sign on the left and a minus sign on the right. Finally, also in this branch, we have our load resistor, which is labeled our sub L. This is the component whose value we need to determine. The problem asks us to find the specific value of our sub L that will absorb the most power from the rest of the circuit. To solve this, we use the maximum power transfer theorem. The maximum power transfer theorem states that for a DC voltage source with an internal resistance, or more generally, for any network of sources and resistors, the maximum amount of power will be delivered to a load resistor when the load resistance is exactly equal to the Thevenin equivalent resistance of the source network. So, our task is simplified. The condition for maximum power transfer is that the load resistance, R sub L, must be equal to the Thevenin resistance, R sub TH. Our entire problem now boils down to one thing, finding the Thevenin resistance of the circuit as seen from the terminals of the load resistor. Let's begin the process to find our sub TH. The first step in finding the Thevenin resistance is to mentally remove the load resistor, R sub L, from the circuit. This leaves us with two open terminals where the load was connected. We are going to find the equivalent resistance looking into these two terminals. The second, and very crucial, step is to deactivate all the independent sources in the circuit. We have two independent sources here, a 10 ampere current source and a 15 volt voltage source. Here's how we deactivate them. An ideal current source is deactivated by replacing it with an open circuit. This means we remove the current source, leaving a break in the wire where it used to be. An open circuit allows zero current to flow, which is what a turned off current source does. An ideal voltage source is deactivated by replacing it with a short circuit. This means we replace the voltage source with a simple, straight wire. A short circuit has zero voltage across it, which is what a turned off voltage source represents. Now, let's apply these rules to our circuit, as shown in the third diagram in the image. We look at the circuit from the terminals where our sub L was connected. First, we take the 10 ampere current source on the left and replace it with an open circuit. This means the connection is broken, and no current can flow in that part of the branch. Next, we take the 15 volt voltage source and replace it with a short circuit, which is just a wire. After making these changes, we have a new, simplified circuit for the purpose of finding the equivalent resistance. Let's analyze this new circuit. We are looking into the terminals where our sub L used to be. From the top terminal, the path goes through the 5 ohm resistor. After the 5 ohm resistor, it reaches a junction. From this junction, the path continues down through the 10 ohm resistor to the bottom terminal. Because the current source was replaced by an open circuit, there is no other path for the current to take. The 5 ohm resistor and the 10 ohm resistor are now connected end to end, forming a single path. When components are connected in this way, they are said to be in series. To find the total or equivalent resistance of resistors connected in series, we simply add their individual resistances. So, the Thevenin resistance, R sub TH, is equal to the sum of the 5 ohm resistor and the 10 ohm resistor. The calculation is written as, R sub TH equals 5 ohms plus 10 ohms. Adding these values together, we find that our sub TH is equal to 15 ohms. Now we have the Thevenin resistance. Let's go back to the maximum power transfer theorem. The theorem told us that for maximum power to be delivered to the load, the load resistance or sub L must be equal to the Thevenin resistance or sub TH. Since we have calculated our sub TH to be 15 ohms, the value of our sub L must also be 15 ohms. Therefore, 
The final answer is that the value of the load resistor or sub L should be 15 ohms to ensure it receives the maximum possible power from the circuit. To summarize, we started with the maximum power transfer theorem, which set the condition that our sub L must equal our sub TH. We then calculated our sub TH by removing the load, deactivating the independent sources, opening the current source and shorting the voltage source, and calculating the resulting equivalent series resistance. This gave us our final answer.